You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 73. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset, tools, and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go! Hey you, did you listen to the episode on being your own best partner? It was episode 67. That was a record episode. I was so surprised to see that. It is the most downloaded episode of all the episodes I've published so far, at least measured in the first seven days, which is usually what we look at when we see how popular an episode is. And I love that because I think it is so important to be your own best partner. To me, this is really key both in dating and relationships, but also if you want to recover and move on after a breakup and just in general to create a fulfilling and exciting life. So in that episode, I included seven keys or seven elements in becoming your own best partner. And those were choose kind and loving self-talk. Have your own back in difficult situations. Listen to your gut or intuition and honor your boundaries. Know how to emotionally regulate. Develop deep and unconditional self-trust. Take care of your needs and wants on a daily basis. And finally, take your long-term dreams seriously. And so I thought about how I could elaborate on some of these elements to give you more content about them, because I have a feeling that you find it interesting, and so do I. And I decided to dive into self-trust today. So in this episode, I will talk about self-trust, and here's why you want to listen all the way to the end. I'm going to share with you my take on self-trust. What does it consist of, and how can you build it? How can you train your self-trust like a muscle. I also want to tell you why it can feel challenging to do that. What are the obstacles to build self-trust? And it's important to understand because that is the way you overcome the obstacle and become really good at self-trust. And trusting yourself is big. It is the first step in trusting others. It is what allows you to keep a promise to yourself. It is what allows you to achieve a goal in your life. And it is what allows you to become courageous and sometimes go off the beaten track and explore new connections, new places, new activities, and so on. It's also what you need in order to honor and respect your boundaries. And in this way, it's actually a cornerstone in being able to be free and relaxed with other people, including a man. Because you know you are able to honor your boundaries. So what does it really consist of and how can you build that self-trust? Self-trust is like a muscle that you can grow. And you don't need to have a long history of always doing what you decide to do. Always going to the gym when you decide to do it. Or never eating chips and candy if you decided that. You don't have to be someone, so to speak, that always follows through on your goals in order to build that self-trust. And I would recommend that you don't even think of yourself as someone who cannot be trusted or who always does this or that, especially not when it's based on your past, because you get to decide that from now on you can trust yourself. From now on, you will grow your self-trust and you will honor your promises to yourself as much as you honor your promises to others. And maybe you won't follow through every single time you decide something, but you will get back up again and continue and you will do your best. So self-trust, my take on that is that there are three different kinds of self-trust that you need to practice. The first one is the commitment to keep promises to yourself, your self-accountability. And this could look like deciding to get up at 6 a.m. every morning and then doing it. Or deciding to go to the gym or for a run three times a week 
and then doing it. Or deciding to swipe once a week in the dating apps for 20 minutes and then doing it. Nothing more and nothing less. You can work on that in a very intentional way. As I also mentioned in episode 67, you can do the 30-day challenge. This is a challenge where you decide on a small thing to do every single day. Just something that will take you around 10 to 15 minutes, so not something impossible or unrealistic. And then you just go ahead and do it every day for 30 days. And during these 30 days, you want to track it. You want to make sure that you have a sheet where you tick it off every time you do it. And this kind of self-trust can feel very accessible because it is between you and you. And it doesn't necessarily involve anyone else. So it feels like you have more control than, for instance, when you are setting a boundary. And you do have 100% control. But the fact that it's between you and you That can also be a downside, as we tend to sometimes prioritize keeping the promises we make to everyone else over the ones we make to ourselves. So you feel more in control, but it's also more easy to say, yeah, I can do that tomorrow, or I can do that next week, or another day. So be on to your brain when it does that to you. The promises you make to yourself are at least as important as the ones you make to others, and your self-worth will also grow when you show yourself in actions that you matter to you. And the 30-day challenge is actually really good because when you track it and you see the progress, your brain is going to love this kind of visual progression and that is going to keep you more motivated. You can start by making it a very small and easy challenge. As I mentioned before, some ideas could be read for 10 minutes or journal for 10 minutes, meditate, do some exercises, whatever. Something that is not unrealistic and it's just a very small thing. But at the end of the 30 days, you definitely will feel a difference. And then you can step up and turn it into something more challenging. Maybe not something you do every day, but two to three times a week, for instance. I know with myself that as soon as I track something, it helps me to stay accountable. Then there's the second kind of self-trust, that is trusting yourself to be reliable to yourself in situations where it might make other people feel something negative. That could be when you say no or set a boundary with the purpose of protecting your energy and staying true to yourself. And then the other person gets disappointed or sad. Or it could be in a situation where you have to ask for something and it's not being received in a positive way. The other person gets annoyed, for instance. And here the self-trust consists in choosing yourself and your needs over someone else's. It consists of not abandoning yourself the moment you feel that the other person is going to be disappointed and they might be trying to convince you to something that you are not crazy about. For instance, that could be that you have to end a date early and you clearly can feel that the guy wanted it to last longer and he tries to make you change your mind. Or it could be that you have to ask for something where you sense the person getting annoyed with you. And I can think of many examples of that happening in my life here in France, where, for instance, I often have to ask someone to repeat and speak more slowly in order for me to understand what they say in French. And that is not always received in a positive and constructive way. And sometimes I actually need the information that they're giving me. So I can't just leave it and move on. I have to overcome the discomfort of their discomfort. The only thing I can do is try not to take that discomfort on for myself as well. Some of these situations can of course be prepared. You can think ahead of time a lot about your boundaries, for instance, on specific dates. Decide ahead of time, what are my boundaries here and how do I want to express that? What is a way that I can phrase that feels good for me and that feels aligned with me and where I actually will feel okay saying it? This is something you can prepare yourself of ahead of time. And you can also prepare yourself on how it might feel when the other person potentially gets disappointed. 
Imagine this happening and decide ahead of time how you want to show up for yourself and that you want to stay true to yourself and what you then can say or do to stick to your decision. You want to be willing to feel that discomfort that you might feel because someone else feels a discomfort. You want to be willing to feel that and stick to your decision of not abandoning yourself. And the same goes for asking for something. We can prepare a lot ahead of time in terms of what it is we need to ask, what are the information I need to get, how do I want to react depending on the other person's reaction, what will I tell myself if I sense that the other person is getting annoyed, and what are some other ways I can ask this question so that I don't abandon myself but get the information I need or find out where to get this information. And you could call that relying on yourself or trusting yourself that in spite of maybe feeling like a bother to someone, that you will still follow through on whatever it is you have decided for yourself. And just notice here, this is also the kind of trust you want to feel with a man. You want to feel that he is willing to tolerate a certain level of discomfort and being quote-unquote maybe annoying or disappointing to a third person if this is required for him to stand up for you in a given situation. This is the same kind of trust you want to feel to him. So here you're being the partner for yourself that you want to attract in a man. Now the third way of trusting yourself is having your own back no matter what happens in one and two. So maybe you don't manage to follow through on your accountability. Maybe you give in and you don't honor a boundary of yours. You still do not go into blaming and shaming of yourself. Trusting yourself that you will get up again and continue as good as you can and not beat yourself up because of one small mistake. That is very crucial as well. And if you can't trust yourself on that, you can't be safe with yourself. And that's of course really important to be able to grow and stretch. So it should be obvious by now that the main challenge in self-trust is that you have to overcome different forms of discomfort. The discomfort of doing the thing you decided when you feel more like staying at home or sleeping longer. Your brain tells you that it's not that important. The benefit is not that great and the discomfort is much bigger than what you actually experience it to be when you then go ahead and do it. Or it could be the discomfort of potentially making other people sad, angry or disappointed because you chose to say no to something they wanted you to be part of. In dating, of course, this is the fear of not being liked or being liked less or maybe even being rejected. And then there's the discomfort of asking for something when the reaction you get could make you think that you don't really have a right to that or this is how you interpret the situation. All different kinds of discomfort, and once you understand that and you decide to be willing to feel that in order to grow your self-trust muscle, then you have the key to not only self-trust, but also success in life. Self-trust is such a basic part of having a good relationship with yourself, and someone who is acting from self-trust is typically also coming across as more confident, more open, and more positive, because they can feel safe that they will be there for themselves in whatever way is needed. A woman who trusts herself to set boundaries, she can create a lot of respect and admiration from a man. And he will not only feel that she is sophisticated, but also that she knows herself well. And he can trust her to say no when it's a no, and yes when it's a yes. Also, she's more free to explore a connection because she has her own emotional safety net. So trusting yourself, being committed to following through on promises to yourself, and honoring your boundaries, that is key to building that partnership with yourself that you want with a man. Now, I'm at the moment taking new clients in on my new program where I help you become a match to healthy love. It's a program packed with so much good stuff and it's mainly about going from anxious to secure, feeling more confident, seeing yourself as a high-value woman and partner, 
and reconnecting with your femininity, setting boundaries and expressing your standards, and of course, living your best life. And all of this, of course, is because that is what feels best to you, but also so you can attract someone who themselves is interesting, smart, emotionally available, loving and capable of pursuing you. But this program is not only for women who are dating, it's also for women in a relationship who feels anxious and struggles with fear of abandonment and her sense of lovability. And it's for the woman who wants to let go of the past and create a stronger and more loving connection with herself and reconnect with her femininity. So book a 45 minutes free consultation call to get a spot in this program. I would love to talk to you and there's a link in the show notes and on my Instagram bio at Lærke the Love Coach. This was all that I had for you today. I hope you found it useful. Have a wonderful week and enjoy building self-trust. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you also help other women find it. 